2023 Top Series 2 has changed the baseball card collecting game again. In this video, I'm going to break down everything you need to know before you buy. I'm going to talk about some of the top rookies to look out for. I'm also going to reveal which format has the best value. Spoiler alert, it's not the same as Series 1. And finally, I'm going to dive deep into the numbers and reveal the hidden production secrets on today's episode of Striker Breaks. Thanks for joining me today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you know when I go live. Please hit the like button. I put a lot of work into this. I'm trying to share all the secrets, everything I've learned about the upcoming release with you, and I think you're going to like it. First off, seven players to collect. There's a lot of players you can co collect out of here, a lot of good rookies, and I just highlighted a few of them. We're going to keep this real quick. First off, we've got Garrett Mitchell. He's 24 years old, 123 MLB OPS plus. He plays for the Milwaukee Brewers. He's a center fielder, and he's a stud. Next up, we've got James Outman. He's a center fielder for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's a little bit older. He's 26 years old, but he's got a really nice OPS plus for a youngster, 122. That sounds good to me, and it's a big market team. Next up on the list, Francisco Alvarez. This is one of my favorite players that I'm going to be collecting. He's a catcher for the New York Mets. He's young. He's a highly touted prospect, 21 years old. And in his tenure in the MLB, he has 131 OPS plus at the time of this recording. Next up, we've got Josh Young, third baseman for the Texas Rangers. And he is good. He might win rookie of the year. He's 25 years old. And during his tenure in the MLB, he's got 119 OPS plus. One of the guys that everybody's talking about, everybody's interested in getting in on this kid while he's real young, the phenom Jordan Walker. He's an outfielder for the St. Louis Cardinals. He's only 21 years old. OPS plus doesn't look that great. I mean, he's it's a right about league average at this point. They sent him back down to the minors to do some work, but he's got huge potential for a huge player. Then of course there's Anthony Volpe. A lot of people are gonna be going after this stud. He's a shortstop for the New York Yankees, the biggest, most collectible baseball market that there is. He gets the Yankees bump. He's 22 years old. Eh, OPS plus doesn't look that great at this point, but he can do it all. He's got a little speed. He can play defense. He can hit. Anthony Volpe. And finally, Corbin Carroll, probably the best young player out of the whole group. He's only 22 years old and he can fly. He might be the fastest player in the league. He's got 140 OPS plus so far. Kid can rate, kid can run, kid can D, kid can do it all. Now, I just highlighted a few of the players that are having their rookie cards in 2023 Series 2, but as you may or may not know, Series 2 tends to be a little bit more focused on the rookies rather than the veterans. They produce a lot. They use it as a promotional tool. It's out in all the stores. People start thinking about baseball. Now, Series 2, the production goes down. There's more rookies. They change things up a little bit. But look through the checklist. Go to Cardboard Connection or Beckett.com. They have a full list of the entire 330-card checklist and a little RC next to all the rookies. You can see for yourself. I'm sure your team has some players to collect. Next up here, we're going to talk about the value sheet. This is where all the little hidden gems come into play. I put a ton of work into this. I grabbed all the different formats that I could find. I could figure out the price for and the dollar per card, dollar per pack. Dollar per pack is the most important. And if you like this video, hook me up with a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, please. I greatly appreciate it. And if you really like what I do and you want to support me, consider joining the Patreon group. The link is in the description below. You can become a slammer today. We're starting at the top row. These are the different formats. Jumbo boxes, hobby boxes, blasters, hangers, fat packs, retail boxes, and monster boxes. These retail boxes are the 24-pack retail boxes. They have a little hanger tag on top. You might see them hanging. They're a little bit thinner of a pack than the fat packs. The fat packs are seven bucks. And these hangers, these are the hanger boxes. Usually, hangers are bangers. Are they again? They were not in series one, but we're going to find out. Next up, we've got the dollar per card. And if you're a penny pincher or you just like value, this is where you want to look. You can see here that the jumbo has the worst dollar per card, but it makes up for it because you get a guaranteed auto in your box. And that's why the dollar per card is more expensive. A guaranteed auto and two relics. Hobby boxes have the next worst dollar per card at 27 cents a card, but a hobby box has a guaranteed autograph or relic. Most of the time you're going to get a relic out of there, but occasionally you'll get an autograph. And also the silver packs come out of here. Don't forget about the silver packs. I did not take any money off for the silver packs. 
usually I'll, I'll take like $20 off the cost of the format. If we take the $20 off for the value of a silver pack, the hobby boxes are crazy. We'll, we'll get to it, but first we're going to talk about the dollar per card. Blaster box is 25 cents per card. Hanger box is 19 cents per card. So between the hanger box and the fat pack, you've got the best dollar per card. Retail boxes and monster boxes also have a good dollar per card. We're going to start here with the Royal Blues. Royal Blues are only available in the retail format, and this used to be the only exclusive in retail, but it's changed this year. This year, we've got Royal Blues, Blue Foil, and Purple Foil. Not this year, this particular release. Series one did not have did not have blue foils or purple foils, so we get a little treat. And not, not to mention, the blue foils and purple foils are numbered. Blue is to nine ninety nine, and purple is to seven ninety nine. So that is awesome. I suggested that they do something like that, and they did. Shout out to you, tops. So the blue foil, which format is the best to pull that? And guess what? It's the fat pack. That's a common theme. As far as retail goes, the fat pack is money. Let's go down to the rainbow foil. You can get rainbow foil out of every different format, but the best way to pull one, the cheapest way to pull one is out of the hanger box. It's only $26 per rainbow foil. And then you can look over here at the fat packs. Those are 28 bucks a rainbow foil. Those are actually, that's a real good format as well to get those, but those aren't the most collectible cards. What is one of the most collectible cards is the gold. The golds are numbered to 2023 20, and we got to figure that out. Guess what? Golds, boom, right here, hobby boxes. And this is the theme that's going to continue for the rest of this part of the video. Hobby boxes are absolute bangers. No longer are jumbo boxes the way to go. In fact, I don't even know if I could recommend buying a jumbo box at the current prices. That's the reason why I included a $125 price for this hobby because hobby boxes should, j just to be in the realm of everything else, hobby boxes should be $125 if jumbos are $200 and everything else remains the same as far as the price of the retail. Hobby boxes need to be $125. So if you can get them from, for lower than that, gobble them up. And the rest of these parallels that I have on the sheet, we've got green foil, green rainbow foil, orange, red, vintage stock, Independence Day, Mother's Father's Day. We got the SSPs down here. Everything else pretty much remains the same except for blacks. We'll talk about that. But the best format is out of the hobby box. Let's talk about blacks because those are super collectible and those are available in only hobby and jumbo format. And the blacks are numbered to 72. So as you can see here, uh, once again, the hobby is the best format. We're going to finish off on Mother's Day and Father's Day just to give you a comparison of how much better it is out of a hobby box. $2,600 to pull a Mother's Day or a Father's Day versus $4,000 out of a jumbo box. Oh, my. And the Mother's Day and Father's Day is extremely expensive out of a, out of a blaster. They made less blaster boxes, but blasters are still the skunk of the retail world. If you're going to look for a Mother's Day and Father's Day, once again, it's out of a hanger or a fat pack. And finally, we're going to talk about the SSPs, which are commonly referred to as golden mirrors. And these are the these come out of every format, but the best way to pull them is also out of a hobby box. Now, we're going to do a little comparison in this next part of the video between series one and series two, and it's gonna open your eyes. On this page, I've created a spreadsheet that compares series one to series two, and you can see S1, S2, top row has the formats. I only did jumbo, hobby, blaster, and hanger box because this is tedious, tedious work, and I only have so much patience, but if we go all the way down to the golds right here, we can really find what we're looking for. Series one, one and four out of a jumbo for a gold. Series two, one and five. It doesn't look that bad. It looks as you, you might be thinking, okay, that's about the same. But the thing is, is they made less. They made fewer jumbo boxes. A decrease in production and an increase in the odds is a bad combo. Jumbos are not good. Go over to Hobby, and it was one in 33 packs to pull a gold out of a Hobby in Series 1. Now it's only one in 18. Look at these prices. It's way better of a value. It was $131 to pull a gold. Now it's only 71 out of these formats. And, okay, look at the blasters. Now, blasters are still the worst format, but look how fewer there are in existence. In Series 1, it cost a, it cost $353 to pull a gold. Now it only costs 100 So at least it's in the realm of possibilities to pull one. Before, it was like you had to open boxes and boxes to pull a gold. Now you're not going to have to open that much. Just a few boxes will get you one, one in 28. So go over to the hanger boxes, and it was one in 15. 
16. Now it's one and seven. And just look at the difference in price. You can see that between the two formats, the best way to pull a gold is out of series two hobby. The price is only $71 to pull a gold. So they're making it more fun, more collectible. This was the plan all along. They destroy you with series one and then they build you back up with series two. And then by the time we get to update, the production is going to be even less and it's going to be even funner to rip. And there's going to be some rookies that we want out of there too, I imagine. And we can go down the rest of this list and look at all the other numbers, but the story is pretty much the same. If you want to look at green rainbow, you can see that, you know, it was $308 for series one out of a jumbo and now it's 462. So the price of doing business has gone up for a jumbo. I really don't recommend buying a jumbo. The only reason you would is if you want to collect the gold foils. Gold foils are very collectible, but I don't see a reason to collect the gold foils so heavily now that there's these blue foils and purple foils that are numbered. People always prefer a numbered card, and you can get those out of retail. So the tide has shifted, and no longer should you just exclusively buy jumbo boxes, which is what I pretty much did for Series 1. I did buy some hobby because I didn't know. I was gone when uh, the release initially came out, but then when, as soon as I found out that jumbos were the way to go, I only bought jumbos. And the story for series two is you should, you shouldn't only buy hobby boxes, but that should be the vast majority of what you buy. Because when you consider the fact that you get a silver pack in there too, you take 20 bucks off the price. If you want to just sell your silver, you can sell that thing on eBay, take $20 off your $95 price. You get down to 75 bucks essentially for a hobby box and these numbers go down even more and it just turns into a gross value so but do not sleep on the retail format you're gonna want to pick up some fat packs and hanger boxes because that's the way to get the blue foils and the purple foils something tells me those things are going to be quite loaded with the inclusion of royal blues blue foil and purple foils now we're onto the production aspect of the video and to really figure out how much of this they made relative to series one, we have to dive into the numbers. First off, to figure out hobby production, you have to use the clear cards. Clear cards are only available in the hobby format. You can't just use the super fractors like you do in some of the other releases because there's no uh, retail formats. You have to use the clear first and then you have to use the blacks to figure out jumbo. So to figure out the hobby production, we use the clears. Series one, there were 3590. That means there was about 150,000 boxes made. Series two, the clears are one in 32.52, which is 135,500 boxes, roughly. It's about 11% decrease, 10.6, if you wanna get really picky. And now that we know how many hobby boxes there are, we can figure out the jumbo production. We gotta use the blacks, because blacks are exclusive to hobby and jumbo, and the blacks are one in 262. They're numbered to 72, so that means there's about 13,700 blacks that come out of hobby packs now that we know how many come out of hobby we know how many are left in jumbo so we do the math and we figure out there's about 10,058 this is for series one by the way 10,058 blacks come out of jumbos which means there's about 80,500 boxes now series two jumbo the odds for the blacks went down a little bit we got to figure out hobby first so we know there's about 3,252,000 hobby packs the blacks are one in 218, they're out of 72. So 14,917 blacks come out of hobby this year, which is more than the series one. And we can do the math and figure out there's only 8,800 blacks that come out of jumbo packs. We do the numbers and that means there are 59,250 boxes approximately. And that's about a 26% reduction in production from series one to series two. So hobby production, about 11% decrease. Jumbo production, about a 26% decrease. I didn't go through and do all the numbers for blaster production, but I can tell you that there's probably about a third as many. So it's probably like a 70% reduction in blaster boxes just based on the rough numbers. And blaster boxes are bad. I wouldn't recommend buying blaster boxes at all, but they are better than they were in series one at least. So here are the main points of the video. Number one, there are a lot of good rookies in this release. Go through the checklist, Beckett.com or Cardboard Connection. Look at the list. There are 330 cards. Look for the RC next to the player's name and you can figure out all the good rookies. And I had trouble narrowing it down to just seven. There were like 15 rookies I wanted to put on here, but it's just too time consuming with the graphics and the research and all that. But I'm sure you can find somebody that you want to collect. Number two, Hobby Boxes Rule Series 2. No longer are Jumbos King. 
Hangers are actually bangers, not the ultimate bangers though. Hobby boxes are the ultimate bangers for series two. Number three, production is down and it's down by quite a bit. So that means it's gonna be easier for you to pull parallels of the players that you collect. Golds are easier and there are new parallels, the purple foil and the blue foil, and these are numbered and these come out of retail. So it gives us even more of a reason to buy retail boxes. And finally, if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, hook me up with a thumbs up and ring the notification bell. Thanks for watching. I will catch you all later.